The living standards of average twenty-somethings have slipped from a position of comparative affluence to well below par over the past 35 years. Meanwhile, average pensioners have enjoyed a rapid rise up the national league table of incomes. While the broad gap between rich and poor has remained pretty flat in Britain since the early 1990s, the divergent fortunes of typical younger and older adults represents perhaps the most dramatic change in British society over the past generation. The FT visited Age Exchange, a community hub in London's Blackheath, to talk to people of different generations about how they see their place in society. Alex is a 27-year-old arts graduate who is an administrator at the Age Exchange. She still lives with her parents. Originally, I was very, very ambitious when I left school. That was the driving force because I went to a really terrible school. It was a failing school and actually managed to do quite well and got into a good university. And it was the whole thing of escaping in a new life and this adult life. Housing costs, even though I am working in quite a low paid job, are very, very frightening. I think the prospects are quite low because I'm kind of in between. I'm not somebody who'd be eligible for like council accommodation and just renting a room would be very, very expensive. Um, so it's something that I could do with potentially savings, but um, that would take a very, very long time. And I would definitely be in debt of some kind, to some degree. Um, there's a possibility. It's just a bit easier to stay at home and to kind of contribute and to be this eternal teenager for a little bit longer. And I can see this whole generational divide and this resentment because I think people of our generation have got parents who say, oh, by the time I was 24, I had a car and we had a little house and we were thinking about getting married and settling down. And it just kind of makes me a bit angry and a bit jealous and resentful because by the time I was 24, I still felt like I was about 14 and living at home and that these things were grown up things that were having would happen in the future eventually, but certainly out of reach of the resources that I had. And so we just we're finding it really difficult to find somewhere that's going to be stable, especially having a baby now. Uh, it it makes it so hard knowing that you're going to have security, thinking about the furniture that you buy, um, the schools, the nurseries, and how that's going to affect us, and that we're being priced gradually out further and further from where we live. I'm on maternity leave at the moment. I uh, work as a nanny. Um, before that, I worked for a design agency. Uh, my partner, he's a researcher and fitness instructor. And even with all of those uh, jobs and my maternity pay coming in, there's nowhere near enough to pay for rent, um, to have like shopping, and then for a holiday at, at the end of the year, it's really difficult. So at the moment, living with our parents has given us a bit of breathing space, but it's not an ideal situation. So uh, we, we are going to have to move and it's going to be tight. We still don't feel like we've got any security and we don't have money at the end of the month to put away for savings, which is quite frightening when you've got a baby. I feel very lucky, very fortunate. I think I've been particularly fortunate in that there are other people who started in the same kind of position as me and um, uh, certainly don't own a house at, at my age and they basically have the state pension, etc. So it just so happened that things I happen to do and some of the time you don't really make choices, you just do things just happened to leave me in this kind of position. I think that an awful lot of poor young people stay poor until they become poor old people. Well, that's certainly been true in my lifetime, and I cannot see that we're doing anything but making it worse at the moment.